kind of last year, and it was one of my first free tour um, concepts ever. I was super excited about it, and I was lucky that I had somebody left over, and so I repackaged them, and now they're back on the website, and I absolutely love this color palette. Hey, folks, uh, we got Anne is on here, Teresa, hi, to you and Gretchen, Suzanne, Jean, good to see you guys. Hey, would you mind giving a quick shout to our beach group at Beach Week and Insights out there? Um, can't really do it since I'm live, but I would love if that would still help if you guys have. Um, anyway, brought this color back, color palette, repackaged it, and now I want to create something with it to elaborate. I have an idea in mind of what I want to do. I'm going to use some pop up flyer, I think, in there with it. I just got a turquoise color actually, and I think it'll be really a nice, just a great color pop with what I have in mind. Um, and then I'll as what the hit contents are. So, yeah, let's get to it. I hope you guys are having an amazing evening. Um, I know for sure that I am. Pardon me while I adjust this camera real quick. There we go. Okay, hopefully you guys can see everything. Um, all right, here we are. Silver, silk, and more. New packaging, new labeling. Um, I'm going to actually undo this, show you what's inside. Hey, Joy. Dawn is back, too. Lovely to see you guys. Oh, Jenny says you guys can't hear me. Can you guys hear me okay? Let me know. I can definitely adjust. Um... Oops. we go as I need to hopefully it's not going to give me too many problems tonight <laughs> okay what do I open up first um here we go this is the gold capture chain solid gold on top of that so we're getting a gold ball chain with a six needle um weave six needle knit excuse me it's a knitted sleeve that goes over the ball chain so it is machine knit, and you can definitely see all the glorious detail that this chain has. The color on this is permanently enameled, so you're not going to see um, a whole lot of wear and tear at all with the degrading of the color or anything like that. Um, it is super soft, super supple, feels good on your skin, so when you're wearing it, it feels like a normal jewelry chain. And I love using it. I love that I have ownership of this product and it's just it is always surprising me every day to see what people create with it. So I also packaged a few of my findings. This is great to get you started in case you have no idea what to do with any of this. Um, you can definitely whip out a quick necklace and earrings and I guess what prompted me to bring this back especially as a video was that some of our folks here were asking for me to do a video on what to do with some of the contents of this kit. Um, so this is, I think, a really great starter package. And if nothing else, then you just get to add to your palette of Silver Silk and Jesse James beads. So you get two uh, single strand end caps, you get four jump rings, you get two earring, hook, uh, earring hooks, and two um, head pins. Now, the great thing about all of my findings is that they're all plated exactly with the same formula, the same color. So you're not gonna see any sort of different colors between, you know, the earring hooks or the jump rings or, you know, mixed match metals or anything like that. They're all brass plated, all high quality, super fabulous. Um, and I think that's one thing that's really been important for me in moving forward with my company and expanding on my products is making sure that everything is consistent across the board. So lastly, Jesse James Beads hooked us up last time with Colors of India. And that means that they did a custom mix for me because I provided them with a really detailed mood board, which is basically me taking photo inspirations and finding textures and colors and stuff that I put together myself and they were able to reinterpret with beads. And boy, did they do a fantastic job. 
they really found the most cool colors, textures, and sizes to include in my um, collection here, in my little kit. So as you can see, you get a ton of beads right off the bat. Um, you get a couple of these great boho beads. This is something that they're actually really well known for and that they actually design in-house and make. And so I was thrilled that they started with that and then kind of designed around it. You of course get some custom tassels and look how gigantic these are. I'm actually gonna be using this in today's tutorial. Um, yes, Em, I can see your comments. <laughs> Hard for me to read and talk you through this at the same time, but I'm gonna do my best because um, I always forget to read the comments, but um, I will do my best today. I can see that Mary's also watching. Look at these crystals, really cool. I love those, I love these. I mean, you get some really great larger beads and they all come in pairs. So it's gonna work really well for earrings. Um, some of these come in a, a set of four actually. And so you get a little bit more mileage out of it if you're wanting to make um, additional accessories or matching uh, bracelets or whatnot. Now, along with this collection, also on the website, I added um, back the chain reaction. And this is a complementary chain to that kit. And so if you're really wanting to amp up the designs that you have that use colors of India, you can definitely check out the chain. Um, Amber, uh, that answer is yes. She is asking, are you selling those again? Absolutely. If you check out silversilkonline.com, in the upper left-hand menu, you're going to see three little lines that you just click, and then that expands out another menu. And within that menu, you're going to look for Colors of India, and all of these goods are going to be there. So, good question. But check out the chain if you love it. Um, but I am eager to get to tonight's design, and I am a huge fan, I don't know about you guys, of the no-clasp necklace is what I've been calling them. Something you could just kind of throw over your head and be out the door and not have to worry about, you know, fussing around too much of, is it gonna clasp back there or not? And I think this kit really accommodates for that particular style. So I'm gonna show you a quick little design that you can do right at home in minutes, which I'm gonna time myself right now that I can do. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach my end caps. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just string it right over the capture chain. And then I'm gonna use a pair of nylon jaw pliers to crimp it. Now, I do not want any of my findings to be scarred, brave, any abrasion, or anything to happen. So I definitely wanna use the right type of plier, which is a nylon jaw plier, to crimp them. This protects it while I'm crimping it. There are little teeth inside of this crimp so as you can see, I don't need any other glues or anything extra to make it really secure. Um, but there, my necklace base is pretty much done. So what's great is you get three feet of this, plenty enough to throw around your neck. And then all you can do here, or all you have to do here is just kind of stagger it and then just do a quick little knot. And that kind of becomes your centerpiece of your necklace. And then the rest of this can just hang down like that. Very easy so far to work with, um, but as I said, mentioned earlier um, that I'm going to be using Softflex wire, and I really like this turquoise green. I think it goes really well with the palette. So I'm going to just get some of that out and work with it. The Softflex wire is sadly not included in the kit. However, my buddies at Softflex wire will definitely have that for you. If you want to visit their website, you can check it out at softflexcompany.com. Or I believe they might have shortened it to just softflexwire.com now. Um, but along with that, I recommend their crimps as well, which I only have softflex crimps. They are amazing, super high quality. They have a very thick wall. They are tarnish resistant um, and just really well made. The fact that they don't have a seam just makes a crimping a whole lot easier too. Okay, so what I wanna do is actually, I kinda wanna make a little loop, but I wanna go ahead and put it into my little end cap there. And I'm gonna try and make a little component out of this. So what I'll probably do is give myself a 
pretty reasonable sized loop. Maybe about right there. I think that's pretty good. And I'm just gonna try and get my crimp right over that seam as best as I can, and then move on to my magical crimpers. These just have a single divot that you place your crimp into and you just press it down like that. You get this little ravioli shape and you just simply just turn it on its side and re-crimp. And you just kind of keep turning it in quarter turns till you get a nice little ball just like that. And this makes it super secure. It looks like a little spacer, so it just adds to the aesthetic value of your crimp. And then you can simply just design however you want. Now the question and the real pressure is here is what beads do I use? And trust me, that's a really good problem to have, especially with this particular kit, so. All right, Amber says, cool, loving this kit. Oh, thank you, me too. I love the theme. I love how vibrant and buoyant it is. It just makes me happy looking at it. And I could spend hours just designing different ways to map, uh, apply the beads and stuff on to this particular design. So I don't know. Do I want both strands to be exactly the same or do I want one to be different than the other? I mean, really the choice of designing is up to you guys. I think what I might do is actually do a blue one on this side and I could definitely hit that little crystal up there and then maybe use these at the bottom so that I have some cohesion. I really like that. I think I'm gonna go with this type of design. And I don't think I need anything at the bottom here. I should be okay. Let's just give it a try. Hey, Abby. Guys, if you haven't checked out Abby's latest video, it does, she did use silver silk and boy, she did a beautiful earring design. I think I posted it to the Silkies group, but highly check it out. Abby, if you could post the link to your video, that would be amazing. Um, but man, is she talented and such a charismatic, fun person. I got to run into her a while ago. I think it was either the Philly show or might have been beat a button. I don't know. I know it was a while ago, <laughs> but I'm thankful that we connected or reconnected actually. And, um, Love their store. If you want to also, Abby, post a link of your store, that would be great. Y'all, she has, she's got a um, bead store and it's the bead place, I believe. And they have fabulous things. All right, pretty easy so far, nothing crazy. And what I've basically done was I didn't have to use my Oh, there we go. I think my wires are getting kind of worn out there. I didn't have to use my head pins to do this design so far, and I can use those for my earrings. Ooh. So I can just attach this directly to my loop there. Maybe. <laughs> Need to see where this is attached. Ah, there we go. That pin was long. Perfect. Cool, I love the length of that. I like how minimalist it is. Again, I can, um, I can add on more beads if I want to. Oh, you're welcome, Abby. I'm happy to help and mention you guys. You guys are amazing. Very, very talented, and you just add so much to the creative community. Okay, so same thing here. I want a larger loop at the top, and I need to spill myself out some more crimps here. Hey, Nancy. It's nice to hear from you from Central, Central Pennsylvania. Um, I guess I should say hello from Oklahoma. <laughs> there we go. We're finally experiencing some warm weather, though. I'm really happy. And, uh, do things outside now. Usually the cold gets me very, very homebody and not wanting to do anything outside. There we go. That 
looks good. Again, just making sure that my seam is, or not my seam, the end of my beading wire there is close to the edge of the crimp as possible. Perfect. Again, getting that nice ravioli shape. Make You guys have to make sure that the crimp is all the way inside of the magical crimpers in that little divot, otherwise it's not gonna work right. But once it's crimped, it's it's really good to go, believe me. Oh, perfect, you guys, Abby posted her link. Hey, Joan, looks like you're, you say that you're late, but I think I just started or at least don't worry about it. <laughs> some runaway beads there. Do I want to attach this over here? I guess I could. Eh, it's a little much. Save that for something else. Clearly, I will have a ton of beads left over for another project. Okay, I'm going to string this guy on. This time, I'm going to actually go ahead and just string right through this and then make my loop. I love how much soft flex wire adds to this. I mean, it makes the beads pop, just works so well with this design with silver silk. And I know for sure whatever product I'm using, it's gonna be pretty high quality, which is really, it truly is important for me to make sure that I'm using the right products. If I want something to last a long time. So that looks really good. And again, I, I kind of like and enjoy how different that is. I could make it matchy-matchy, but I'm just not in that mood today. <laughs> Why be in a matchy-matchy mood, right? Hey, Mimi. I'm glad you could join in. Thank you so much for taking time out of your evening to hang out with me. Cool. There we go, an easy little like lariat necklace and took me minutes to do, but now I've got some earring hooks that I need to do something in with. So, hmm, huh. I don't know. <laughs> you think that I would be easy to, I could use my beading wire um, to make something or my head pins, but maybe, I don't know, maybe it follows a simpler design of this and then I can use my head pins to put something at the very end here. That'd be pretty easy to do. So let me give that a try. Okay. And besides that, now I would have a complete matching set on top of that. So that would also be a good rationale for this particular design. Okay, so. Again, just gonna make myself a little loop here. I'll make it pretty tiny. There we go. Abby says, I love the big loops of soft flex. Me too. This is just one kind of style that you can do, but I've seen them do a multitude of different types of loops with soft flex and it's pretty awesome. Okay, now what beads do I use? Maybe this one. I haven't gotten to use my boho beads yet, but I didn't even think about it. And one thing I missed out on telling you guys actually that I was gonna do, maybe I could still do it. Okay, I'm changing the design a little bit. So, Remember a while back we covered how to take stuff apart without ruining everything? <laughs> well, in this case, what I would do is if you're wanting to separate your end, uh, your end cap with your capture chain, there, sadly, you will have to suffer a little bit of loss, but it's really not that bad. Because what I do is I just grasp it with a pair of pliers and I just pull it out. So it breaks that wire off, which is sad, yes. But then you can go back in and separate your end cap just enough to get the rest of it out. And then you will have salvaged some of your end cap. This is, if you have boo-boos and uh-ohs, 
um, along the way. We all have those. I mean, I, I mess up stuff all the time. Case in point with this design because I had something else in mind. Um, but I wouldn't recommend doing this for maybe more than like three times. Otherwise, you start to put wear and tear on your poor little end cap there. So I'm just going to trim a little bit of this off. But as you can see, I didn't really waste a whole lot. Probably just uh, four millimeters of my capture chain. What I was going to do is this hole is large enough to fit right through my chain. So I'm going to string both of those on at the moment. And I'm going to re-crimp this. And you'll see why. There we go. Perfect. You want to make sure that that seam does touch and it looks like it's pretty secure. So the cool thing here is, is that I can drop the other bead onto the other side. Oh, here we go. Let's just untangle it. Okay, the other side of my design here. And I have an instant like additional little design element there. So just something to consider. Um, this kind of hides that end cap if you're wanting it to just a little bit enough to make it look like an additional design element. And you could see that this is actually mirroring the length of my tassel. So I've got a lot of gold there that kind of sticks down and then it goes to a different color. Well, up here, it's kind of doing the same thing with the gold. It's just a little stem and then you get another design element up there. So just something to consider um, whenever you're making, if you want to make this design. And now I can tie this back just like that. And we're back in good shape again. Okay, back to the earring. So... Let's see. What I think I want to do is actually add in these little spacers. And then go ahead and crimp the bottom of it. There we go. Put one of these in. Hey, Pat. I'm glad you could join in. I love the size of the Jesse James beads too. I mean, what is more convenient than having beads that <laughs> fit your chain? <laughs> it's pretty good. I like that. Okay, back to these. Crimp. Perfect. Okay, just trim that off. Very nice. So now I can, Ooh, let's put these guys back out of here. Attach this to it now. Here, I guess, because it's pretty symmetrical, I've got a larger loop on top and a smaller one at the bottom, so I guess you guys can decide however you want to string it on. I'm going to do the larger one on top, though. And then now I can just put in a little dangle just for fun. Um, maybe we do a pink. Or we do another sparkly. I mean, there's so many in here to choose from. I don't know that sparkly one. It's kind of nice. We could do a black one. And you know what, it's kind of funny because I've got an asymmetrical necklace, so I wonder if it would be taking it too far to do an asymmetrical earring. I don't think I'm brave enough today to do that, but if I sit here and think about it, I could probably pull something off. I don't know. Just depends on who the end wearer is. If I didn't want to put this in, I could absolutely just do one of these. Um, but I already closed up my loop, so I'd have to open that little ring up. So let's just do this. 
and cut it right there. And I need to grab my round nose pliers and my chain nose. There we go. Okay, just gonna make sure that my loop is nicely shaped here. Sometimes I gotta work with this a little bit to get it to do what I need it to. As you can see, I got my nice little P-shape there and then I just have to go back and break that neck so that my loop is nice and centered. So then I can just open it up, slide it in, slide my bead wire in and then shut it back. I agree, Joan. I love these satin blue beads a lot. And especially with that turquoise wire, it just works so well. Cool. Okay, so I just need some more soft flex wire. I also really like my head pins, and I know that's funny for me to say, but um, I don't have the normal head pins that have just the pin top, but these actually have a little round ball at the end of them. And to me, that just says it looks more expensive, <laughs> but I guess that's just me being bougie. Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm quite particular about my head pins, I guess, and I'm thrilled that I can actually have these in stock and in my personal inventory as well, just to use. They just look a little bit more higher end to me, but I don't know, what do you guys think? Okay. That should be good. Now, from what I understand, I don't think that the magical crimpers work for a single strand of beading wire. Um, you do have to have two wires in order for it to crimp successfully. So just something to consider um, whenever you're making some sort of style with beading wire. And I guess what I'm thinking about is like if I'm trying to float beads onto the beading wire, it's not gonna work as well just with the one strand. So you're gonna have to kind of manipulate the wire to make it work for accommodating that design or that technique. Okay, here it is. Gia says she agrees about the head pin and its finish. I, yeah, I think it just adds a little extra to it for sure. Okay, let's try this. Make this smaller, close to wrapping this little earring up. Kind of just lay them side by side to see if there's going to be any size difference, but it looks like it's pretty close. Close enough for me to be happy with it. So now I can do my little pink bead. The flat pins seem crooked and have rough edges. Yeah, definitely want to watch out quality wise on some of those things. I'd imagine if they have all that stuff, it wouldn't be fun to wear them either. Is there a reason for leaving the soft flex wires, wire loops big? Asks Jenny. I did because I want to show the color more purposefully. Um, I thought they added a bit of air and um, space for that larger bead to kind of float in the middle and just gives it a little bit more, I don't know, more space to appreciate it. 
Whereas if I had everything nice and tight and condensed, I think it would look a lot smaller visually, um, but it would, for me, just seem too compact. And so I just left a little bit of error between all the elements using Softflex wire. Hopefully that answers it. I know that's sort of a weird answer <laughs> for someone and it's coming from someone very artsy, I guess, too. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay. There we go. All right. So I still have a ton of beats left over that I could do anything with. And, you know, if I got out some more wire, I bet I could probably do a quick little bracelet to go along with my collection here. But I'm pretty happy with this little set. Um, all came from the same kit. The only thing that I added were the crimp beads and the soft flex wire, which was this stuff right here. Hopefully you have that in your inventory. If you don't, again, check out softflexwire.com or softflexcompany.com. Um, but you can grab my kit and I'll post a link on the uh, comment section here, as well as the post um, to find it on silversilkonline.com. Beautiful color combination and color palette. I just adore gold. It's a great color for summer and what a way to step into summer with a very vivid bright palette that's very i don't know celebratory and um buoyant just reminds me of india a lot so i'm gonna turn this camera around all right thanks guys so much for joining me and i really love this little design very minimalist in a way but i think the beads from Jesse James B just adds, uh, adds such a wow factor to it. And we didn't have to use a clasp for this design. I just did a simple little knot. So all we have to do is just string it right over our head and be out the door. All right, and not to mention our earrings, right? Because now we've got a full set. So pretty good against my skin there. <laughs> all right, I'll photograph all this stuff and um, post it onto the Silver Silk Silkies Facebook group page if you haven't check them out, um, Silver Silk Silkies. It's a fun little group that we made together. We post all of our inspirational photos and other videos and things that we're doing, things that we're working on, all things Silver Silk. It's fun and fabulous and I'm always inspired um, to see what you guys come up with. <laughs> Emma says, I like uh, the clean shaved look. Enjoy it while you can because it's coming back. I feel like my beard grows back in like, two days. <laughs> okay, you guys, Sarah Ellis has a fantastic design with another kit from Silver Silk and more called Paris in the Rain, which I released for the spring. And I posted the picture of two earrings that she's actually going to make from it. But that's happening this Thursday. So you won't want to miss it. It's at 630 in the evening if you're on Eastern time. So definitely mark that on your calendars. Otherwise, I will check you guys out here again soon. Take care, and I will hopefully see you Thursday. Bye!